So let's, uh, before we move on to part two, uh, take just a brief look back at part one and see the results of it and, and, and where it you know, leads us, starts us off, what direction. Uh, there's a small irony that I'd like to, to comment on, 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 on page three uh, you know, that might, may or may not be interesting or important. In assessing uh, the value of his own inadequate education, he goes through, you know, what was the philosophy for, what was the mathematics for, what was the reading of ancient literature for, what did it, you know, what did it really do for me? And uh, assessing the value of the reading of classical texts on page three at the bottom, he says, I did not, however, cease to hold in high regard the academic exercises with which we occupy ourselves in the schools. I knew that the languages learned there are necessary for the understanding of classical texts that the charm of fables awakens the mind, that the memorable deeds recounted in history is uplifted, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this notion that, you know, basically uh, I was reading poetry and literature and, you know, who knows what he meant by the fables, but they're basically fables, stories, uh, legends, and they were charming and they awakened the mind. And one would imagine that, you know, the whole point is that he's not really satisfied with that sort of thing anymore. Right? ready to move on. But in characterizing what he's doing in his own book at the top of page three and whether or not this, you know, what the extent of his claim is to have found the method for conducting one's reason well and seeking truth in the sciences. The bottom of page two, he says, thus my purpose here is not to teach the method that everyone ought to follow in order to conduct his reason well, but merely to show how I have tried to conduct my own. Those who take it upon themselves to give precepts must regard themselves as more competent than those to whom they give them, and if they are found wanting in the least detail, they are to blame. But pu putting forward this essay, this this essay in that you know original sense in French, essay a to try, you know, it's, it's a trial balloon, man. You know, it's an essay not meant to be scripture. But putting forward this essay merely as a story, or if you prefer, as a fable, in which some examples one, uh, in, in which among some examples one can imitate, one will perhaps find, also find many others which one will have reason not to follow. This characterizes his own discourse here as a kind of fable too. Whether that's false humility on his part, whether he doesn't really mean it, no. That is, is, is what he's doing here any more, any less fabulous than reading poets of the ancient world? Okay, so at the end of part one, how does he characterize things? How does he end things? Uh, he says at the end of page six, I learned not to believe anything too firmly of which I've been persuaded only by example and custom. But is he looking for, you know, I, I, what should I, what, what are the grounds of belief? And example and custom, that is the sort of habitual beliefs that we pick up because everyone else believes them. That is that they're customary, uh, that we learn by example, by watching others. That, that's not enough for him at this point. And he says, and thus I little by little freed myself from many errors that can darken our natural light. Again, that faith, and I, I don't know what else to call it, but faith, that our natural light, what in other places he calls the natural light of reason, connecting up with his assertion uh, earlier in part one, that, that, that reason is something that is intact and whole in every human being, and we just have to learn to, to use it right. That, that is that as long as we clear away the brush, clear away the things that darken our natural light, we should be able to find truth. I uh, little by little freed myself from many errors that can darken our natural light and render us less able to listen to reason. But after I had spent some years thus studying in the book of the world, and as he goes out into the world, he leaves the school, he wants to experience and you know find out the truth in the world rather than in, in books and in academic uh, but after I had spent some years thus studying in the book of the world and in trying to gain some experience, I resolved one day to study within myself too and to spend all the powers of my mind in choosing 
the path that I should follow. It's a very famous sort of dramatic moment in not only Descartes' life, but in the history of philosophy because of the importance of Descartes. That is, that in, in, in seeking a criterion for truth and in, 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 in seeking not only opinions, beliefs, but knowledge and, and a criterion for distinguishing the true and false so that one could be assured that one had knowledge. He seemed to be saying uh, through his autobiography, I, I looked for it or assumed that it would be given to me as a child in the school through books and through my teachers. That was a mistake. It wasn't given to me. And then we see him, you know, and as he says, you know, what he did going out into the world, as a soldier, as an adventurer, as a traveler. I looked for it in the world, you know. I looked for it outside the school, in, in you know, in the world, in experience. Uh, and it's not that that was useless, just as being a student in school wasn't useless. To him, but I didn't find it there either. So where will I find it? If I find it anywhere, and this seems to be the sort of inescapable logical conclusion, I'll find it myself, because after all, I'm the one who has to decide anything. I resolved one day to study within myself, to, to rely on myself, and to shut myself off from these other sources, supposed knowledge, the schools, the books, the, the world, other people, and to really ask myself, what do I know, and how do I know it? And uh, this is the prelude to the method, that is, this method that, that, that he presents in part two, which may be useful, maybe not, but he's saying this is, this is what I've come up with, uh, and this is what I found within myself as the, 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 the only way to conduct one's reason well and hopefully find truth. So let's, let's look at the part two in the next.